Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five, and welcome to day 18 of our 40-day journey. I hope you're just being blessed by this. I know I am. I, I've just found this to be such a good experience during this season of Lent to have these special times to just really dig into the Word of God and to have spent some time fasting and other things that have just really helped us. And so today, we're going to continue our journey by looking at a passage from Philippians, Paul's letter to the Philippians, will be looking at chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And so I would invite you to grab your Bible, or you can pull it up on your phone and join me in Philippians, in Philippians, easy for you to say, chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. Here the Apostle Paul writes these words. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind, doing nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Yesterday we started to look a little bit at the life of Jesus and some of the ways that he reflected humility in his life. And really, he just, in every imaginable way, just lived for us this beautiful, powerful example of what it meant to live a humble life. And now here in uh, Paul's letter to the Philippians, he calls us, the Apostle Paul calls us to reflect that same humility in our lives, to be like Jesus in our humility. And I think it I think he kind of helps us to understand in this passage what that really means. What does it mean for you and I to be humble. Because I think a lot of people misunderstand it. I think a lot of people view it in a way that's not accurate or correct. Humility is not self-deprecation, right? It's not, you know, putting ourselves down. We don't have to we don't have to kind of devalue ourselves in order to be humble. There's a saying I heard years ago that I think sums it up very well. It was that humility is not thinking less of ourselves, it is thinking of ourselves less. You understand what I mean by there? Uh, put another way, perhaps, uh, humility is not thinking less of, let me emphasize that word, less of yourself, it is thinking less about yourself, right? In other words, just not always being focused on us, right? Like we've always got to be, you know, sort of in the, in the center, if you will. Uh, and so uh, it, I think this is really kind of what, what Paul is describing in this verse, right? In this passage, where particularly in that part where he says, not looking to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Not thinking about yourself, but thinking about others, right? And so humility is greatly a willingness to set aside our ego and to be concerned for others, to not have to have everything be about us, right? I learned a phrase many years ago that I think really helped me greatly in this pursuit of, of living a humble life. And it was a very simple phrase. And it went something like this, Steve, it's not about you. Not everything's about me. Right? I, don't, I don't have to be at the center of everything. Not everything has to sort of revolve around me. I'm not the sun, right? right? There's a song, I don't want to be the sun, I want to be the moon. Right? I don't want to be the sun, I don't want to be at the center. I want to reflect the light of the sun. Right? And so this idea that it's just, it's not about me. Some people live their lives as if everything's about them. Right? That it's all about, it's all about me. They always need to be like the center of attention. They need to be the, the focus of every conversation. 
But Jesus is calling us to a different perspective. And Paul really describes it beautifully here. To live like Jesus is to put the needs of others ahead of our own. To have a heart to bless others, to serve others rather than be served. Now, we'll just be honest, that's not always easy, right? That is somewhat contradictory to our human nature. Uh, and it's a concept that's not greatly reinforced in our culture. You know, in culture we have sayings like, look out for number one and get yours, right? Those things are about you being at the center. Make sure you're getting what you want and all of that, right? I mean, just the fact that we would have that phrase, look out for number one, and we all know who number one is, right? We all immediately hear that. We know what that means, right? It means you're number one. You're at the center. You're, you're the epicenter of, of everything, and everything revolves around you. So just the very fact that we all know that number one means me, I think says something about how our culture views this topic. But Jesus is calling us to live differently. And I believe, I believe the way we really do that is to make the decision to make God number one. Right? Not us, but God, because when He is in the center, right? when we put Him in the center, now we can trust that God will take care of us, that God will, will meet our needs. And so it frees us up to care for others, to bless others, to you know, focus on others. When we don't have to worry about whether we're going to get what we need, when we just make God in the center, we make God number one, then now we know God's going to take care of us. And so we can now be free to take care of others, help others, bless others. Right? And that's really what I believe Jesus is calling us to. Jesus always put the needs of others ahead of his own needs, all the way to the cross. And so to be like Jesus is to live humbly, putting the needs of others ahead of our own. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, I thank you for this important teaching from Paul. It really reflects everything we see in Christ and our desire to be like Christ. And so help us to remember, Lord, that we're, we're not number one. You are, God. You're number one. You need to be the center. You're the sun, and we're the moon that reflects the light. And so help us, God, to have that heart, that humble heart that lets you be at the very center and allows us, in, because of that, to focus on others, as Paul talks about, care for others, reach out to others. Bless us as we seek to do that. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.